Welcome to this video, which is part of my series on the seven metals of antiquity. The seven metals of antiquity are the seven most important metals throughout ancient history, many of which still have plenty of applications to this day. The seven metals are gold, silver, lead, iron, mercury, copper, and in this video, tin. Tin has played a pivotal role as long as human records have existed. Written records, that is. You have probably heard of the Bronze Age. However, bronze isn't the typical metal you find in nature. It's actually a combination of copper and tin. See, when humans were progressing technologically back in the day, they switched from stone, hence the Stone Age, to copper, hence the Copper Age. But copper in and of itself is a soft metal, and is not particularly useful for warfare. It's a fantastic conductor of electricity, which makes it very usable today, but it had limited applications on its own during the ancient era. So what do you know? When you mix it with tin, which is another soft metal, lo and behold, you get a metal like bronze, which is a lot tougher. Now today, when you hear the word bronze, you typically think of someone getting third place at a sports match. And while that is true, there was a period in time in which bronze was pretty much the dominant material for everything from household tools to manufacturing. And of course, the pointy heads of spears that were fantastic for stabbing people with. Some of the earliest traces of tin were found in ancient Samaria, in what is now Iraq, and around Egypt, roughly around the same time, 6,000 years ago. The Bronze Age particularly refers to the Eastern Mediterranean, composed of civilizations such as the New Kingdom of Egypt, the Hittites, or an Indo-European group who reside in Turkey, as well as the Mycenaeans, the first mainland European civilization in mainland Greece, as well as the Assyrians. By mixing tin with copper, metal workers created this bronze, which could be essentially used for an incredible number of applications. It was stronger and more durable. However, while copper was quite abundant around the eastern Mediterranean, tin was not. Tin was actually quite rare. You have to keep in mind that people at the time did not have access to as many places around the world in terms of their trade connections, and they had far more limited technology and they could not mine deep enough as a result. For this reason, much of the nearby tin deposits were usually found in England, and much of the sources of smelting tin were found in the island of Crete in what is now Greece. This meant that there would be trade networks set around primarily the island of Crete, and if people wanted some tin from somewhere else, they would oftentimes have to sail along long distances. This is part of the reason why the Phoenicians, in the aftermath of the Bronze Age collapse, would sail to far off places, including what is now England. Tin was not only valuable for its role in bronze production, but also a major trading commodity in and of itself. Much of this tin came from a region known as Cornwall on Britain. This is an area that still retains much of its Celtic heritage, and it's no surprise that these early Celts had traded in tin. This in many ways was the first major contact the British Isles had with the outside world as a major economic hub. Now obviously the modern state of UK did not exist, or even a concept of what England was at the time, but the Celtic peoples that resided around this area got a great deal of cultural influence from people in the Middle East, who were at the time far more advanced. The Celts loved using tin by the way, both in and of itself and for bronze production. Now today you might think of Celts as being from Ireland or Scotland, but the reality was that they dominated much of Western Europe before the arrival of the Romans. And you can see much of their legacy through the use of tin and bronze tools and weapons. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, much of this influence would fade away, along with that of copper and tin to be replaced by iron. Iron proved to be far more common, far stronger and far more durable although a lot uglier. Part of the reason for this newfound love of iron was because iron has a far higher smoke point than both tin and copper, and with better metallurgy and better technology, humans were able to forge at higher temperatures. Eventually, with the advent of the Iron Age, the Romans would arise, dominating much of the Mediterranean, and they would still use tin, but rather than using it for weapons, they preferred to, by and large, use it for more ornamental purposes or for minting coins, 
After all, the softness of tin made it very malleable, and given the fact that the Romans now had access to much of Western Europe with a great deal of tin deposits, meant that tin was now more abundant than it used to be. When the Western Roman Empire collapsed, the Middle Ages would emerge, and tin would still be used. Again, not so much for weapons, but really for the production of pots, pans, and cooking ware, which it still is used to this day, although we have a lot more competition today. Eventually, tin would basically take a backseat as iron would become more improved with the new alloy called steel, which would combine iron with carbon and magnesium. With steel now being the dominant material that held society together, oftentimes literally, tin really didn't receive that much attention. One alloy of tin that continued to be dominant was pewter, which is composed primarily of tin but also has some antimony and copper. Future today is by and large used for ornamental purposes, and I guess the good side of it is that we're no longer mixing pewter with lead because unlike tin, lead is very fond of killing you. Moving on forward to the 1800s with the Industrial Revolution in full swing, tin would have a comeback. This was primarily because tin was known for being abundant due to better mining technology at this point and better access to international trade. On top of that, it was light and malleable. It was also pretty good at preventing rusting when you combine it with other metals. With the rise of factories, tin would prove to be the perfect metal for canned goods. After all, with international trade, there was a lot more emphasis on non-perishable goods, particularly when it came to food. This made the production and logistics of processing and distributing food far cheaper. And since tin is largely non-toxic, it became the preferred method for packaging of foodstuffs. At this point, tin became so abundant that the word tin is now associated with cheapness, which is quite remarkable given the fact that at one point in history it was coveted. The term tin can is usually referred to something cheap, something that's crappy, and not particularly desirable. But nonetheless, tin has so many applications today that, let's just say, are more highbrow than a can of baked beans. It is used in the soldering of electronics, along with motherboards and solar panels. With the rise of green technology, we could see a renaissance in the use of tin. After all, it's a pretty good conductor of electricity. Much of this newfound abundance has to do with wider international trade access. Ancient Egyptians clearly did not have access to tin deposits in Indonesia and Brazil, the largest producers of tin today. You can see vast tin mines in these countries that provide livelihoods for the people living there. However, it can also lead to controversies revolving the working conditions. Today, there is a lot more emphasis on recycling tin. Part of this is because while tin is a finite resource, it's still technically a renewable resource given the fact that we can re-scrap and reforge it. So the next time you open up a tin can of tomato sauce or black beans or whatever, don't look at it pitifully. Acknowledge that the cheap material that is containing this food has built civilization and will continue to have a profound impact, not only on some of the most mundane lowbrow substances, but also some of the most cutting-edge technology that will propel us into the future.